Managing difficult to treat rheumatoid arthritis, D2TRA, requires a comprehensive and individualized approach. Here's a structured plan that can guide management. Hashnar 1, reevaluation and diagnosis. Confirmation, review the diagnosis. Ensure that the RA diagnosis is accurate and not confounded by other conditions like fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, or other autoimmune diseases. Assess disease activity. Use tools like DAS-28, CDAI, or SDAI to assess the current disease activity. Also, evaluate functional status and structural damage using imaging, e.g. ultrasound or MRI. 2. Evaluate treatment adherence and response. Adherence. Assess patient adherence to prescribed therapies. Non-adherence can be due to various factors including side effects, financial constraints, or misunderstanding of the treatment plan. Pharmacokinetics. Consider drug levels and anti-drug antibody formation, particularly in biologics. Testing for drug levels and anti-drug antibodies may be useful if there is a suspicion of inadequate drug exposure. 3. Optimize current treatment. Maximize DMARDs. If the patient is on a CSDMARD like methotrexate, consider optimizing the dose or route, e.g. switching to subcutaneous methotrexate before adding or switching to other agents. Combination therapy. Consider combining CSDMARDs, e.g. methotrexate with leflunamide or sulfasalazine if monotherapy isn't effective. Switch or cycle BDMARDs. If the patient is on a BMARD, consider switching to another BMARD or to a targeted synthetic DMARD like JAK inhibitors. Sometimes cycling through multiple BDMARDs of different classes may be necessary. Number four, consider comorbidities and risk factors. Manage comorbidities. Conditions like obesity, smoking, cardiovascular disease, and depression can contribute to persistent inflammation and pain, complicating RA management. Lifestyle modifications encourage weight management, smoking cessation, and physical activity, which can improve overall disease outcomes. Five, evaluate and treat extraarticular manifestations. Systemic features. Monitor and manage extraarticular manifestations such as interstitial lung disease, vasculitis, and cardiovascular disease, which may complicate the treatment plan. Six, assess psychosocial factors, mental health, Address anxiety, depression, and other psychological factors that may affect disease perception and response to treatment. Referring to a psychologist or psychiatrist may be beneficial. Support systems evaluate the patient's support systems, including family, work, and access to healthcare, which can impact treatment adherence and outcomes. Seven, innovative therapies and clinical trials. Consider newer agents. Investigate the potential use of newer BDMARDs, TSDMARDs, SDMARDs, or combination therapies that the patient may not have tried yet. Clinical trials. If conventional options have been exhausted, consider referring the patient for participation in clinical trials exploring novel therapies. 8. Shared decision-making. Patient involvement. Engage the patient in shared decision-making, ensuring they understand the risks and benefits of each treatment option. Tailor the treatment plan to their preferences and lifestyle. Set realistic goals. Set realistic treatment goals regarding pain relief, function, and quality of life. Sometimes the goal may shift from complete remission to low disease activity or minimizing flares. 9. Regular monitoring and follow-up. Frequent assessments. Regular follow-up visits to assess disease activity, monitor for side effects, and adjust treatment as needed. Multidisciplinary approach. Consider involving a multidisciplinary team, including physiotherapists, occupational therapists, and pain specialists to manage persistent symptoms. 10. Palliative and supportive care. Pain management. Consider adjunctive therapies like pain management programs, corticosteroid injections, and possibly even surgical options in cases of severe joint damage. Uh, patient education. Continuous education on disease management, self-care strategies, and coping mechanisms is crucial for long-term management. This approach requires flexibility and responsiveness to the patient's evolving needs, with the ultimate goal of improving quality of life while managing disease activity effectively.